Jordan. Um, he's going to tell us how to catch them. Fantastic. All right, so let's move on to our next speaker. Keep the time going. Mr. Felipe Echeverri, our cameraman. Theme of today's speech is your greatest childhood adventure. What came to mind, to my mind at least, was not necessarily my greatest childhood adventure, but I can say one of the craziest childhood experiences that I've had. And the process getting to that experience and what left, what led after that experience, is one of my greatest adventures and even ongoing adventures that I've had as a child and today. As the son of a professional race car driver. My father was the president of the Motorsport Federation in Colombia. He's raced cars all his life. He even raced motorcycles before because he didn't have enough money for cars. I guess I was destined to drive cars, but at high speed. It was in my blood to go to take corners, fast speeds, and to resist high G-forces. And nowadays, now that I think about it, I love it. It's, it's one of my passions. But, at that time, when I was a kid, when I was a child, I thought I was being forced to do it. Just because my father is doing it, I have to do it. That was kind of my mentality. When we moved here to the United States, I was seven years old. My father, to replace the big 800 horsepower stock cars, he found the fundamentals of that, which was go-karts. And it's true, the go-karts teach you all the fundamentals you need to go to racing. And so at the age of around eight, as the good son I was, my father just said, all right, from now on, you're going to start coming to practice with me. You're going to race and train with me every single day. And I said, yes, sir. I had no choice. <laughs> after that, every single day after school, I would leave school at 3.30. I would have this van, this lady would drop off the other students, and then she would drop me and my brother off to the racetrack. We would get there around 4.30 every single day until 8 p.m., 9 p.m., um, basically my life. And I remember very clearly, not necessarily my racing experiences, but how I would cry and how I was sad. Because I would practice every single day and I never won a race until the age of 14, 13. I would, I would try so hard with no success. Now with a father like mine, which has countless numbers of trophies, winning events every single week and being on TV. And as my inspiration, I have to live up to that. I wanted to live up to that. Now this one experience, the one that I spoke about, was one day when I was about 12 years old. I was just practicing regularly like every other day. And this day, my father told me we're gonna practice aggressive passing and defensive driving. That day was also peculiar because my mother being at times over exaggerating and, and panicking a lot, she was very scared. She didn't really want us to race. She was there for one of the first times ever. And with good reason, once I tell you why, she never came back. So my mother was there watching us and we were going through this big U-turn. My father was following me and at that particular moment, I decided to turn early to try to block him off. As I turned early, I had not noticed him that he was already trying to pass me, because it was aggressive passing. And so he ended up hitting me on the back like this, if you can picture that. Now to give you a little bit of background on these go-karts, they're about they are this big, they slow to the ground, they go 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds, like in the movies, you accelerate, you don't see anything, it's the real experience. And in this particular go-kart, the maximum speed was around 80 miles per hour. So I was going 30, 40 miles per hour, turning, and he hits me like this. Another fun fact was that for safety reasons, there was no seatbelts. <laughs> Why? And it does make sense. When you're going 60, 80 miles per hour, and you're like a seatbelt, imagine it, and you have to suddenly stop, that pressure, the force the seatbelt puts on you, is enough to bring your clavicle, damage your sternum, and damage your insides as well. So as a safety precaution, you don't have seatbelt. So what's the logical, the, sorry, what's the other logical thing that's gonna happen? When you stop, you fly. <laughs> <laughs> so at that exact moment, with my mother 
out there in the stands watching. <laughs> my father hit me, my own father. <laughs> and I flew, <laughs> like a rag doll, 10 to 15 feet in the air. And they say it's 10 to 15 feet in the air, because I don't remember anything. <laughs> but I landed, and they say I rolled about three times. What I do remember is that they say I woke up like three seconds after. I just wake up, and I see the, the racetrack. And my first thought was, I'm in, the middle of, I'm in the middle of the track. Someone's going to run over me. So I stand up, and I go to the side. I go over here, where the track's over there. And then my father, he stops over there on the side. He looks at me, and basically raises my, my, my wiper, the visor. And then he tells me, are you OK? Are you OK? Are you OK? And I'm like, yes, 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 I'm OK. What happened? And he's like, you just flew. And I'm like, oh, so that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just, are you OK? Are you OK? And I'm like, yes, I'm OK. I just told him, no, I have a little pain over here. And I was shaking, but other than that, I'm fine. He goes, okay, just drive. <laughs> drive. And without hesitation, I just drove. And at that moment, for some reason, I did one of the best times that I had ever done before. And now that I think about it, it's for very good reasons. At that moment, they say, that when you get your first crash in race car driving, now you're not a virgin anymore in race car driving. <laughs> <laughs> you have experienced something. That's that breaking point. Because I believe for two reasons, now that I analyze it, I was not winning before. One, I felt I was being forced. And two, I had a fear. A fear that at any moment I can crash and get hurt pretty bad. And after that accident, I realized you got to take risks to actually win. You got to be aggressive, safely, of course. But you cannot hesitate. And that's the most important. If you hesitate, that half a second, quarter of a second, especially in the middle of the race, is what's gonna make you either a good driver, a great driver, or either a champion. And I understood that after that moment. Because my father, thanks to him, he told me to drive. And since I drove, I forgot about the fear. And I just drove. And that's what really defined me in that moment, to become the type of driver I am today. And not just in that, but I realized that I can't hesitate in anything I do. And so that's why it's an adventure from before and an ongoing adventure now, where hesitation is something that I kind of eliminated. Whenever I get into something, I go 100%. And that's my lesson for today. Don't hesitate. <laughs>